two years we've been working on this. As far as I can tell, it's been a waste of time. A waste of time? What do you mean? Oh, be reasonable, Professor. This malarkey leads to the sort of public hysteria this country does not need, especially with the Reds putting more comrades in orbit every month. <laughs> it's a good guess that they have atomic weapons up there already. And this little conference, well, it's squandering assets that are vital to national security. Oh, I don't know about that. You know what Shakespeare said? Shakespeare? Yes. There are more things in heaven and earth, Ratio, than have been dreamt of in your philosophy. <laughs> Unidentified flying objects? No, we'll see pigs fly before we see aliens land. This conference will come to order. Now, I uh, tend to believe that it will be possible to keep this session within reasonable limits. Of course, we will be dealing with complex, and to some extent, controversial subjects. All of a sudden, about a dozen lights shined on me. The lights were all like the color of the headlights that, well, like had mud on them. This is the old IREA building here. And uh, I believe Howard Ellis was at this building from reports and saw it. Over here where the new town hall is was Bud's 66 and uh, trailer court. And there were some guys in there and he ran in and told them. Egg-shaped bubble was about 50 feet long, 20 feet wide, 20 feet deep. They came out to watch it, and it just started moving kind of straight down Main Street. There was a definite plastic-looking globe as the source of light. The globe was about 600 feet off the ground and was more than 30 feet in diameter. Whatever it was flew came down Main Street and then just kind of veered off over the old courthouse and just disappeared in a flash of light. Castle Rock, Colorado, January 3rd, 1968. Deputy Sheriff R.S. Weimer said about 12 reliable citizens reported seeing a loud bubble-shaped object flying over the town between 6.10 and 6.25 p.m. Tuesday. Morris Fleming, director of the Douglas County Civil Defense Agency, said about 30 persons saw the object. Dr. Norman Levine, research associate with the University of Colorado's Air Force financed UFO study project, said Wednesday morning that CU scientists would launch a preliminary investigation into the matter. Levine said investigators in the UFO study project office had been doing some checking by telephone to confirm the report. Not immediately available for comment was Dr. Edward U. Condon, head of the CU study. It was a uh, total pandemonium around here from what I've been told, with people showing up and questions being asked and where to set up the blood lab and, you know, start the testing of the ground and everything else that was involved back then. So that's, that's just it. it. It escalated so quickly. It, it, quickly got out of hand as far as what, uh, there wasn't much time to explain to anyone what really had happened. Everybody knew the guys that had actually seen it, and they were all responsible businessmen around town, and so there wasn't really any reason to doubt them, I don't suppose, especially from my point of view, because I was just a kid. We had done this experiment in our science class, and while home over Christmas vacation, I decided that it would be fun to try to reproduce that experiment for the family just for something to do. I 
I've been asked to show you the formula for the perfect UFO. Basically, the balsa wood sticks involved are standard kite sticks, 24 inches long, glued in the center. What we had done is attach birthday candles uh, by taking candle wax, dripping it onto the sticks, and attaching the candles. About four to five candles per arm of the cross sticks. And also then to the center, we glued a small bowl that we fashioned from tin foil. In that bowl, we put a rag and we soaked that with lighter fluid. We attached the dry cleaning bag to the sticks with just standard scotch tape. And there's an opening at the top of the bag that we taped shut. And as someone held the bag up, we lit that center cup filled with lighter fluid so that the heat would rapidly fill the envelope. So that gave us time to light all the birthday candles. And at that, once those were all lit, the extra heat from those, as the uh, lighter fluid burned down, the heat from the candles took over and uh, caused the bag to rise very nicely. It was an extremely cold night that night, about 10 below zero. It was around six in the evening. We went out on the front porch of the house, which was on the south end of Wilcox Street. Because it was so cold, it was very effective. And there was also no wind that night, so it worked extremely well. And the bag lifted up and got to an altitude of approximately 30 to 40 feet, probably 50 feet, and began to float northward down Wilcox Street approaching the old courthouse and it hovered kind of in the air at that point and um, the whole experience probably lasted about 15 minutes. The candles at that time got down to the wood and caught the wood sticks on fire and the whole thing burned up within a matter of seconds. It shot straight up and disappeared shooting out a couple of balls of flame. It rapidly gained altitude and then shot out three large sparks of reddish-yellow color. People who actually saw it said it was at least 30 feet in diameter. Fleming said the Douglas County Civil Defense Agency would administer a blood test on Ellis Wednesday to determine if any radiation or unknown or foreign matter is in his bloodstream. At that time, there was a UFO mania going on in general in the country, and as a matter of fact, CU had a UFO program in place, and the Air Force was heavily involved in the UFO study. So those people were showing up in town, I guess, and the newspapers and the television stations from Denver came into town and were interviewing people on the street, and it rapidly progressed into UFO mania. Did uh, you attempt to follow it at all, Merle, or did anyone attempt to follow it? Well, there was... Uh, Bob Riley and myself were standing out here, and it appeared that it broke up. But all, a couple lights dropped, and that was it. it all mean, went out. You mean it disintegrated or came to pieces? Uh, that's the way it appeared. All of a sudden, these uh, lights shined up, and it was just like daylight. And uh, I looked up, and there's a row of lights shining. Very quickly, the next day, this all transpired. My mother kind of watched this happening and was somewhat amused and then became very concerned that this was getting terribly out of hand. And realizing this, my mother said, wait a minute, we need to pull the plug on this right now. It's not funny anymore. It's become a very serious issue. And that's when she came forward. And so the next day in the paper, it gives her side of the story and apologizes for the inconvenience and the commotion that was caused by the whole incident. Two high school boys, brothers Tom and Jack Dietrich, 14 and 16, launched their ship shortly after 6 p.m. According to their mother, Mrs. Norbert Dietrich, Jack learned how to build a balloon-like structure at the private school he attends in St. Louis. It may be all in fun, but the irritation comes when about 30 citizens, many of whom are not being in the least bit hysterical, report seeing an unidentified flying object, a UFO. When the laughter starts, which is understandable, it can cut pretty deep for those who, in all honesty, reported what they saw. They were possibly going to take me in and question me and, and determine if that were the case. If, if it was a malicious act, it caused a, a lot of inconvenience for the local authorities and and a lot of people in general. So I think they really thought that it was done intentionally 
at that time. I suppose a simple solution to the UFO circus by the TV, radio, and newspapers would be to ignore the free show at our emotional expense. For myself, my office, and others, I wish to apologize for the rudeness, the lack of self-respect shown you by the merrymakers who actually meant no harm and only hurt their own image in the eyes of their friends. Although I've been told there's some people that are still not real happy with me, but it was truly an innocent thing and no idea that anything would come out of it other than a science experiment. <laughs>